deep sea mining in Tonga uh, is currently we have three companies who were exploring, uh, who has license to explore for deep sea minerals in Tonga. They started ex their explorations uh, license in 2007 and they've been continuous uh, and active in their explorations until up to date. Um, so far they have no, in the past two years, they have not much activities in the water, but rather continuously in their assessment and testing of the samples that they have uh, sampled in the past, uh, since 2007. I think everyone is worried now, um, uh, especially uh, Gypsy uh, fishermen, because uh, they have uh, invested a lot, and some are still buying boats uh, for snapper fishing. Uh, with this uh, idea of um, uh, tipsy mining, it's it's very threatening to everybody. Um, all they say it's safe, and it is very minimal uh, damages, but not true. Uh, we know it's not true because uh, they will be disturbing the uh, habitats, uh, wherever the fish are, because we are looking for the fish. And we know uh, uh, that the mounts that they, they are trying to mine is exactly where the fish are. But this is something to do with the sea because we're concerned with the coral reef. If the coral reef is safe, and then likely the fish is safe. And then the ecological system, they can interact with themselves. But if the fish, the coral reef is like is bleaching or impact, and there will be like effect on the fish habitat and the population of that community. And we're not getting much fish. But you're talking about only one um, particular species of vulnerable species of a coral reef. So it's very, we are very concerned just to keep that healthy environment and the ecosystem. The study for other marine scientific studies that are relevant to deep sea minerals activities continues to be. Uh, there have been two recent uh, marine scientific research in the areas where it's um, where they think it's high potential for seabed minerals. Those areas uh, were studied for the marine habitats and also the uh, marine organisms around hydrothermal vents, active ones and dormant ones. The results from that study would give us uh, more insight of uh, what are the marine life like in that, those two areas. Before we actually engage, fully engage in the deep sea mining exercise, that there needs to be a closer look at the policies and legislations involved um, that will both protect um, not just women but also men as well. So, when we're talking about deep sea mining, of course, there's a whole uh, chain of um, effects that come with it. So, for example, there's there's land, there's water, um, there's also the environment, and all of these things affect women. Information is not given to us in a way that we can participate in the decision making or our voices are really heard in the decision making. And I think that is something the government should really be considering. Deep sea mining is not going to affect only the, the decision makers, you know. Our seas are going to be affected. Like most of the islanders, we depend on the sea for our livelihood. What will they do? And their effect on our fishing, feeding ground, etc., etc. And if we get any benefit from it, the government and the people, what kind of benefit? Would we get a lot of it or those who are doing the mining will get most of it. Why do we think that affecting the deep sea bed will not have detrimental impacts? This to me is working on your common sense. We do not have the laws in place or the legal or the policies 
to protect our tiny islands should there things be happening in, in, in our environment that will cost us our lives. It sounds very um, attractive to think about mining and automatically you think about all these countries like Australia with a lot of mining and wealth and all that, which is very attractive. But again, it's, you have to really understand what what it means, what's the consequences, what are you going to get, and what, how are you going to deal with waste. Because we already have problems with, with waste. The picture the government paints is there's this huge income that will come and that it will help everybody. That's the, the, the draw or the lure of, of deep sea mining for our Pacific Islands, I think for Tonga, for Tongans. Uh, is the perception that uh, money will come in and it offset our poverty. Will it offset poverty or will it trigger other things that will cause even greater poverty? I, I think it's, it's, it's the promise of money uh, that, that, that is why I think our governments are, um, are rushing into it. We should just say no. It will damage not only the the fish but other uh, living organisms. We will have to get together somehow and call on later to stop this madness. Protecting our fishing grounds is a key to our survival. But if we are not protected with reference to this particular interest, I'm sorry to say our people have been duped. Whether it's government or it's private individuals, I think they should have some concern for the preservation of our cultural values and the sea or the moana so-called is part of us. Land and sea for us is our identity and once you destroy these things and not protecting the owners of it. You are totally out of caring for and being leaders of people.